Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. Today, we're taking a look at the newly announced Fujifilm GFX 50S II. This is the newest in Fujifilm's lineup of medium format cameras, a lineup which also includes the GFX 100, the 100S, the 50R, and of course the original 50S. Fujifilm's main goal with the 50S II here is to package that extra large medium format sensor into a camera that is relatively compact and affordable, at least when we compare it to other medium format systems on the market. Now with that in mind, let's start by taking a look at the body of the camera. So interestingly, the body of the 50S II is actually identical to the GFX 100S. The 100S in turn was built to be a more compact version of the GFX 100, so compact size is a big point of the 50S II here. It's quite a bit smaller than the original 50S in all dimensions. You can see it's not really much larger than most full frame DSLRs, if at all. It's a fully weatherproof magnesium alloy construction and it feels exceedingly solid. Uh, the grip provides a nice balanced handhold. It has a three-way touchscreen that tilts and flips to one side, although not all the way around. There's a very large and clear top LCD panel with a lot of pertinent information. And you can even change the display to show digital dials or even a real-time histogram, which is pretty useful. You can also choose to reverse the coloring on here to make it easier to read in different conditions. There's an eight direction joystick, which is handy for changing your AF point or navigating menus. And the camera has a very nice 3.69 million dot viewfinder. Note that viewfinder is stationary. It is not removable like it was on the original 50S. There's also a mode dial with six different custom settings, which is pretty generous. The camera has mic and headphone jacks, plus USB-C, micro HDMI, and PC sync ports, and dual UHS-2 compatible SD card slots. It uses a new battery compared to the 50S. It's the NPW235, and this improves battery life relative to the original. And it can be charged via the USB-C port, which is also new relative to the original 50S. Note a new GFX lens was also announced at the same time, the 35 to 70 mm f4.5 to 5.6, which you can see here. This brings the total GFX lens lineup to 14, with four zooms and 10 primes. Overall, the GFX 50S II is a well-designed body, with the key point being the compact size. So of course, the headline feature on any GFX series camera is that huge medium format sensor. To put it in perspective, most photographers are familiar with a full frame sensor. The GFX 50S II has a sensor that is 1.7 times the size of a standard full frame sensor. This conveys benefits relative to full frame uh, in the same way that full frame conveys benefits relative to APS-C or other smaller sensor sizes, namely, uh, the GFX 50S II will have more shallow de depth of field than a full frame sensor. Uh, it will also have better low light performance because it's larger, it can collect more light, and also the pixels will be larger than uh, a full frame sensor of equivalent resolution. So you're gonna get better low light performance, you're gonna get better uh, shallow depth of field. There's also benefits in terms of uh, dynamic range, and specifically the 50S II has 14 stops of dynamic range. For these reasons, medium format cameras are typically used by photographers who want the maximum quality and detail possible out of their images. And this definitely applies to the 50S too. The, the, the large sensor here definitely gives you images that are of higher quality than you could achieve with a full frame sensor. So you're really leveraging the power of that medium format sensor in the 50S too, as you can see. Now, speaking of resolution, uh, the camera has a 50 megapixel sensor, uh, hence the name of the camera. Uh, but it does come with Fujifilm's pixel shift multi-shot mode, which takes a series of images and outputs one single 200 megapixel image. The GFX 50S II has six and a half stops of in-body image stabilization. Now that's a pretty big feature considering that the original 50S did not have IBIS at all. So this is a really important feature if you're gonna be shooting in low light conditions because you can shoot uh, handheld at a much lower shutter speed. Uh, any video work that you're gonna be doing, this camera is not super focused on video, uh, but it will stabilize any video shots you're doing. It's a really important feature just for upping the overall quality of the imagery. If you're not shooting from a tripod, that IBIS is gonna make a big difference to your shots. Looking at autofocus, the 50S II has contrast rapid AF. Uh, this is not the phase detect system that's present in the GFX 100 and 100S, which makes sense. Those are more sports focused cameras, this is not. Uh, it's basically the same system as was in the, um, the original 50S, although the 50S II does have a quad-core processor, which does increase the performance a little bit. Uh, it's acceptably fast for most normal situations. It's not a sports camera, so you're not going to be using this to, you know, do crazy tracking of super fast-moving subjects. That's not the point of the camera. Um, so it's not really meant for that, but uh, in most normal situations, it does quite a good job. I never really experienced any issues with the autofocusing system in my testing. It can also shoot at up to three frames per second with continuous shooting. 
So a great feature available on almost all Fujifilm cameras is access to their film simulation picture profiles, uh, which is based on their long history of film production, of course. Uh, this is present on the 50S too, uh, so you can shoot in, you know, Velvia, Astia, Provia, a lot of these really popular uh, film looks that Fujifilm made tons of film for back in the day. Uh, they've actually introduced a new simulation here on the 50S2 called Nostalgic Negative, uh, which is based on the American New Color product that was available between around the 70s and the 90s. Looking at video, the GFX 50S2 can shoot 1080p at up to 30 frames per second. So since it's not a 4K capable camera, it's pretty clear that Fujifilm was not positioning this as a video centric camera, um, but it does have a mic and headphone jack if you want to mount an external uh, microphone on the camera. And that six and a half stops of in-body image stabilization certainly helps with shooting handheld video as long as you're okay with shooting in full HD. Overall though, the main purpose of the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 is to package that huge medium format sensor and all the benefits and advantages that that conveys into a camera that is compact and affordable. Now, those are relative terms, of course, it's still a chunk of change, uh, but it is quite affordable compared to other medium format systems. So with a 50 megapixel sensor, six and a half stops of in-body image stabilization, 200 megapixel multi-shot mode, access to Fujifilm's film simulations, competent autofocus, improved battery life, and the small size and affordable price of the camera, the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 is a perfect jumping off point for someone who's been considering medium format cameras for a while, but hasn't yet pulled the trigger. It's a very easy entry point uh, to the system, or for someone who owns the original 50S and is looking for an upgrade. Now you can order the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 on our website at www.digidirect.com.au, or you can visit us in store following COVID safe procedures, of course. We have stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, the Brisbane and Melbourne CBD, and Cannington, Western Australia, which is just outside the Perth CBD. Thanks guys, take care.